We produced this edition of The Good Oil in honour of Mary MacKillop and immediately looked to add to our holy order and canonise the patron saint of Australian sport in the name of the Don, the Shark and the awesome foursome. And joining us in the pulpit himself, a high priest in the Church of Sporting Excellence, Andrew Gaze, while seated at the right hand of the father of four, a pilgrim who upon reading the book of Ecclesiastes and the proverb, whoever has money never has money enough, immediately became a bookmaker, Eleanor Skander. Uh, I'm a Catholic, by the way, so I can get away with that, I hope, and no more, I promise. Mark, if you're a Catholic, you went here, here, here. Oh, you forgot the down the, the bottom. No. The, I you... the Don, the right. Shark, the Awesome Force. Get on with it. Who's right your top on. three? My top three, um, number three, I'm going to start off with someone probably a little bit out of the left field in Malcolm Fraser. 1976, we, we absolutely messed up the, the Montreal Olympics, came home with no gold. Bit of an embarrassment on the, on the country. Also for uh, Malcolm Fraser, got booed in the Olympic Village, those types of things. So he's number three for starting up the Australian Institute of Sport. He couldn't, he, can, he, can, he couldn't care less about sport, but he was in the right place. I don't place care less the... about Malcolm. Get on with it. <laughs> Who's number two? Kathy Freeman. Who can forget that magical day in 2000 Sydney Olympic Games? Indigenous Australian, fantastic three. And number one, again, maybe a little controversial, not an Australian, no. the great MJ. Michael Jordan. Is there a man that's had a greater influence on sport in Australia, and I dare say the world, that I, I think you'd struggle to find someone more influential than Michael Jordan? Politics and Americans, righto? I get it. Alan Scander, your top three. My top three. I'm going to start with. Uh, I'm going to start with Rod Laver. Dominated tennis back in the back in the '60s. Um, was uh, was world number one thing. I think about seven years. Won the Grand Slam, all four Grand Slams mm -hmm. in the same year, twice as an amateur and as a professional. Amazing feat. Yes. Number two is Bart Cummings. Dominance of the Melbourne Cup, Caulfield Cup, Cox Plate, Slipper. Dominance mm -hmm. of racing. To be at his peak at 83 years old is extraordinary. He's mm. on fire, absolutely dominating. Number one is a little controversial, Shane Warne. I mean, he was a little. Obvious, <laughs> yeah, obviously dominant on the field, strategist, a great thinker, a great, a great player who was never captain of this country. But I actually like him because of his larrikinism. I know he's got himself in trouble. We've all been in trouble before. We've all done that. Oh. But that's what I like about him. I like the fact that he's a bit of a rebel and a larrikin. I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you. Football is a religion in Australia. So my first nomination goes to world football or soccer disciple Gus Hiddink. Without oh him, we would not have made the World Cup finals four years ago and therefore would not have been the favourite to host what many consider the holy grail of world sport in 2022, the World Cup. Mark? Yes. Two <laughs> votes to Farlap. Uh, how was he? Is that for us to have a horse as the patron saint and one that's stuffed? I think that is absolutely outstanding. So I feel that stiff to miss out. And three votes to Edwin Flack, like St Mary, long overdue. The only Australian to compete in the first modern Olympiad in Athens way back in 1896. Won gold in the mm. 800 and the 1500. Led the marathon before he fell over. Mm. Uh, I thank Edwin for that personally and mm. would like him to be the mm. patron saint of mm. Australian sport. Good well, call. I think you've uh, you lost your mind a little bit there with um, <laughs> with putting a horse in there, but uh, you know, and also Gus is in the country for ten minutes, and uh, yeah. you want to make him a. A patron Twelve games. Now, before the final word from Drury, remember you can hear more of this. Why wouldn't you? Uh, vote for your own patron saint of sport and get the lowdown on the Cox Plate and Mark Webber on goodoiltv.com. Andrew? The final word this week is in regards to Wayne Rooney. He's threatened to quit the Manchester United team because he's got a little bit of a tiff with Alex Ferguson. Well, I say good on Sir Alex Ferguson. It's too many times in elite sport we see these days where the tail is wagging the dog. No individual is bigger than the organisation, the club and the team. And Sir Alex Ferguson, here, here to you. Stick up for what's right. Until you lose a few games and then maybe wait, we might have to have a bit of a rethink. <laughs> uh, there we go. The final word. Uh, not a bad one. Uh, Andrew Gaze. Thank you. Eleanor Skander. Thank you. Peace be with you. And you too, my, <laughs> All the best my brother. And bye for now.